Now back with yet another 1v1, this time playing on this map in a ranked match as the 7th Panzer. So we got the East German Panzer Division versus the 35th Guard. So we are definitely at a disadvantage here, uh, believe it or not. Uh, because, well, pretty much everything he has has forward deployment. So what are we going to do against that? Well, we have special Alfclair and recon units going to the front lines on the left and right. We have MI2 recons going to the flanks. What we do have is Strelas and Ashoka as AA, and we have Machutsen and BMP-1Ps to lead the charge into that little complex there. T-55s to give some fire support, and we have an RM-70 to put down some artillery on these targets. Unfortunately, he is not making great use of his forward deployment, because our RD is now kind of kind of being useless right now. But the good thing is, it has 80 rockets and it fires salvos of 20. After that, it needs time to reload a little bit. But uh, you can fire four times with that thing. Now on the right side, we have our special elf clan, one conquerors team, Estrella and more Machutsen. And we have an opener with helicopters happening on the left. Sidious here with his Mi-24Vs, the AA variants. Uh, definitely a good, uh, good like, area denial unit. Basically has everything. Except ATGMs. It has rockets, it has Iglas, and it has the Yak Gatling gun. Four Iglas with 60% accuracy, also on the move, that is kind of nuts. Now luckily for us though, we do have our Strela and Shilka moving up forward. So that shouldn't be a huge problem. We also have our Machutsen in the back and T-55s creeping up to hopefully be a deterrent for those MI-24s, and they are indeed slowly backing off. But with that, other issues move up to the front. Some BMP recon units, and remember, the 35th has the Metis teams as well. They have Spetsnaz, they have a little bit of everything. At this point, he is at plus eight, so we call in two command tanks to quickly capture Echo, uh, neutralize or contest Alpha, and also to capture Foxtrot and capture Delta and or contest it at some point. Now over here, the flame units here were unfortunately mismicroed, but it did give us a little bit of intel here that he has met his teams on the right side. The Mi-24 comes in, and unfortunately the infantry does not have a good time. I try to get away with them, and uh, they are basically having a scare of their life right now. Quite heavily stunned. We call in the artillery again. The RM-70 once again opens up. SU-25 coming in, and Ashoka and Estrella actually somehow managed to take it out. And that was a really expensive, uh, really expensive loss for him. Now the artillery is literally hitting nothing. All of his units here are in the back in the form of Conkers, Recon, Manpads, and Metis teams. Together with a Screjet as well. But, uh, you know, I don't know that, so I'm just gonna RD it. Now over here we have our units to push into the zone with. A BMP-1P with Machutsen. And on the back we have flame units and regular Machutsen as well. We have a T-55 that is hanging on or hanging out. And we have our command tank that is going to basically move on the left and get into that little patch of woods there. Now the flank here is very important. If I hold this, I hold the entire left side. And if I manage to get into these buildings here, this industrial complex, it's really powerful because I can put man pads in there and block off quite a bit of his air force. Now on the right side, not much is happening yet. I have my command tank moving in to neutralize it. We have Machutsen on the right side. that are going to be tasked with moving up to that hill and basically follow the tree line all the way down to this corner in order to both look for his command, but also to block him off. But the main issue here, or the main kind of thing I want to uh, teach you guys, also with this, re uh, with this replay commentary, is to not panic. Just take it slow, focus on the game, don't worry about the plus four or whatever, he's like halfway through victory, that's not how this game works. It's conquest, you can always come back even with one point uh, difference in the end, it'll be a draw at that point, but you know, you'll still uh, be victorious in your own way. Now the Mi-24s are moving in, I kind of jibated it with the Machutsen, so we move up the Strelas and the Iglas. Strela hitting the first shot really nicely, basically panicking that, and with the second shot puts it down to 1 HP, but then the critical effect takes place, and he gets shot down. 
Now the artillery once again coming in, not really hitting anything. The RM-70, oops, is basically just going to RD the back here. Try to stun as much as possible and uh, basically just force him to move back. Now right side we are finally contesting it, bringing him down to plus two. And we have our command slowly creeping up to the front line. And we have a couple of T-55s here to act as fire support the moment I spot enemy units. Now speaking of spotting, that BRM uh, recon is moving into a pretty good position to basically oversee this entire area. And we are, quite frankly, at a disadvantage in terms of infantry quality. But what we have is firepower. And the main goal here with this battle group is to really just wear down the enemy and play it like in the long run. Play it for the long run. Don't give up if you are pushed in the first couple minutes, like six minutes, we're losing. Don't don't just give up immediately. The thing with airborne battle groups is that they have a really good start. Pretty decent mid game, but they lack the stamina to keep it up for the um, for the remainder of the match. That's my experience with it, at least. Like, the heaviest tanks he has is, um, I believe you have a T-80, T-64Bs. Pretty good tanks for sure, but quite expensive. And uh, he doesn't have that many of them. Now, at this point, my T-55s are just charged with charging the field, basically to move up here. And hopefully, um, with the help of our recon, which doesn't really see that much, unfortunately, because of those tree lines there. Um, the idea is that our recon spots them and the T-55s basically take them out. Now we have another rocket strike happening right here, right on top of the units here in the back. If we just go into neutral mode, once again you can see that there isn't really anything there. We kind of just miscalculated with the third run as well. Luckily though, a couple of those shots are landing on the Screjet and in general just panicking some of these guys. So that's not doing too bad. Now with that, we have moved in our Iglas on the left together with Machutsen, so these guys will be keeping a nice, um, you know, they will control this area here. So if he moves in with those helicopters, he's in, he's in for a bad time. Yeah, me seeing those ATGMs basically made me realize, okay, we're gonna have to move these tanks a little bit to the left and use the uh, cover of the tree lines here in order to maybe get some fire support. And that is something I could have done a little bit better. Moved them, like maybe a couple tanks here because they can actually see nicely into those buildings there. Um, yeah, that could have been a good good way to do it. Now the T-64 here unfortunately has us outranged with the Cobra ATGMs. And unfortunately we don't have smoke on these tanks. So they're not having a great time right now. I was hoping to get close enough to get some gun action going on, but with all these ATGMs, especially the Conquerors on the robot units, they're just tearing us open. So that's not going to work anytime soon. Now, meanwhile, on the right side, we have more units coming in. Flamethrowers. These Machutsen are going to be tasked with moving up as well. We have a uh, Aufklärer unit behind his lines in case he uses artillery or something, and then we can counter it. Now, speaking of Artie, we now have two RM-70s and we're also going to get two Kvostikas, the 155mm howitzers, to set up a smoke mission. Because the plan with these units that I'm spawning in is to flank the front line and drive straight into the complex after we Artie this place and smoke off our advance. Now, speaking of Artie, the RM-70s aren't horrible. They have a big spread so don't expect to really do a lot of damage with them it's mainly just to panic units in there now really nice shot with the t55 there on one of these bmd2s we might actually get another shot off if he doesn't hide Ooh, very nice kill with that one that was a success igla team moved in got a really nice shot on the mi24 and at this point he moved the command in here to neutralize the game basically he is leading with um, almost a thousand points uh, more than us, so it's quite a bit, uh, quite a bit painful. But we'll just see what we got. Pioneer flame units, man, they're so good. I just love those units. They're doing the Lord's work. We got a little bit of a pause here. Flame units versus Resvetkas. Not the best idea. Now the Vasilix are coming in to rain some HE on us. And Vasilix, honestly, not the worst artillery that I've seen. They're just kind of weak 
in terms of HE, but they do it. I mean, they do a moderate amount of suppression. This is not, it's not really great. You want to have a lot of them for them to actually be powerful. And um, the unfortunate side of the um, Vasilic Mortars is that they can't smoke. So that is also a bit of a problem. Now over here we have Metis teams firing away once again. One of our BMP-1Ps gets wrecked by, a, I believe, a T-80 over there. So that's quite unfortunate. At this point we call in the Akatsias, not the Gostikas, the Akatsias, which are 152mm self-propelled artillery pieces. Pretty nice units to use. And they're going to be tasked with smoking the area off. Now speaking of smoke, we deployed smoke with the BMP-1Ps to break the line of sight of the Metis teams. We quickly peek out and then move back into smoke after firing a shot. Basically until these guys are stunned or close to being panicked. Then we just move in with the BMPs and go all in. So he's quite panicked here. Cohesion is quite low with those units. Desaniki teams are moved out. Special Outclaren with the SVD should do a decent amount of damage on these guys. And I quickly move the BMP into a position to help. But I think we got a little bit too close and we get RPG'd there. Quite unfortunate. On the left, SU-25 comes in to try to take out my command tank. Luckily though, we are in cover. And we are not being spotted unless we open up on the Odessa Niki there. And now we were spotted for a second. But the SU-25 targets the other T-55. And flies straight over our AA. Strela missing twice, hitting the third shot finally. The Igla here is reloading. The Shilka is going to get some damage in as well. Panicking this guy greatly. Manpad misses again. Flies over our other Manpads and other Strela. And finally we get a good shot. Look at the amount of AA we got. This is a really nice coverage. Because if he moves in and then breaks right for him, he's flying over AA. If he breaks left, he's flying over AA. Now at this point, we have our RM-70s opening up once again, just to suppress as much as possible. If we just go into neutral mode, we finally actually have a decent spread on the artillery. Going uh, on the Sprejet, the Rasvetka and the Robot and all that, the Pumachiki Brikis. So it's not doing too bad. He does fly a seaplane over. But we don't really have anything that is seedable. The Shilkas are non-radar. Actually, they are radar, excuse me. Um, but the other... Yeah, but the thing about seaplanes is they're not great. They're really not that great for how much they cost. You do sometimes hit enemy AA, but sometimes you also hit them, but they don't get destroyed. They're, like, panicked. Um, which I don't get every time. Now, the T-55s here are kind of on a suicide run. Try to do as much damage and basically to draw the fire while my flank in the back is happening. So we have machine gun teams, we have Machutes and Penzieger, which are really good against tanks and flame units. Unfortunately, he has a BMP in the back, which I did not expect. But luckily, we managed to get a couple units in there, which serves the purpose of holding a line down for us while we have reinforcements coming up from the base. Now the T-55s here, doing their absolute best to try to stun that Conkers. One of us one of them gets taken out, but luckily the Conquerors gets taken out as well. Now the Flamethrower and the Penzieger are a little bit out in the open. They're not really going to do great, so I do decide to leave the front line with them and fall back. While the Akatsias are both countering his mortars, but later I task him with attacking the BMD-2s to take care of those guys. Now the T-55s are cheap. 55 points, no pun intended. So I'm not really, uh, you know valuing their it's kind of hard kind of difficult to say but i don't value their life too much so i just move them into the enemy try to dislo dislodge their position as much as possible we got an mi8 re uh, rocket unit coming in with 128 actually that is 180 192 yeah 192 57 millimeter rockets that is nuts now at this point, I did move my MI-24 on the right side. We didn't really see too much action here, apart from the infantry there. Uh, we just looked at it right on time, actually. Machuts and Resvetka teams, together with that tank over there, which is uh, actually a Skrejet. The MP-1P with its ATGM hits it really nicely. With the uh, Fagat ATGM, 50% accuracy is actually not bad. Now rockets are once again opening up. Deal, trying to do as much damage as possible. They're basically tasked with black blanketing this entire area to stun these units. To try to keep the special off Claren alive for as long as possible. 
Now more planes opening up on the left. MiG-29s, our Strelas are unfortunately almost out of ammo. So that is going to be a little bit of a problem. And here comes the planes. Flying straight over our front line. Not really being the most fun thing ever. But we get a really lucky hit. And we get another hit on the MiG-29. Unfortunately, this one does not hit. Otherwise, this would have been the unit of the match. But at least we took out one and wounded the other. So that's going to put them out of commission for quite some time. Now this mod shoots him, Last man standing. Luckily getting some help from the BMP-1s. That guy's heavily suppressed. Our guy is still fine. And we stunned him. So we're going to survive this one. Now the recon in the back is giving me intel on what he's spawning in. Uh, which can be both land or air forces. So even if he spawns in an airplane, my mod, mod shoots an outclaren, they actually see it. Now we got the um, artillery firing on the BMD-2s. Unfortunately, one of our BMPs here eat an ATGM. So I quickly smoke and move up the other guy to the left. And we have more mod shoots in to take over the field. But the artillery is doing really nice on that BMD-2, basically neutralizing it. Akatia's super accurate uh, super accurate and cost effective now we have more artillery coming in on the northern side of the town here lots of artillery but we got to make use of it because he just simply has better infantry than us now we do have recon here don't think i don't have any recon we got this guy here oh and here we go we had an atgm amazing atgm hit on a t64 and i believe we took it out didn't we guess we didn't. We had a really nice sight shot on him though, so he's definitely messed up. There we go, artillery coming in once again. ATGM from the BMP-1P, one tapping the BMD-2, very nice. I have a newfound love for these. The only problem with the Fagat is that they're slow. And the range isn't awesome. Now, we finally upgrade our armor to the T-72s, we also have t 72 m one so we have quite a lot of good tanks. But since we're in an urban environment, we don't need the strongest tanks. At close range, any AP value will do a ton of damage. This is 18 AP. It's basically going to one-shot most tanks. Now, T-64 in the back there. They do have the Cobra ATGMs. My T-72s don't. So we have to be quite careful here. And the Vasilex there, once again, spotted. We did manage to destroy at least one of them with the artillery. I don't think we did yet. But we got artillery on that. There you go, look at that. Look at that angle. So cool. There's a good amount of verticality in the game when it comes to this kind of stuff. And I like to see it. Let's see what that does. So, it, you know, it does a bit of damage. But it's not awesome. Yeah, the SU-22 here was called in by accident to try to take out the uh, T-64. But uh, that guy was uh, nicely hidden there. Now we finally have some supplies for Estrella, so they're back on ammunition. I just moved them up slightly to try to take out that helicopter in the back, and we have more supplies moving up here. And speaking of moving up, we have another supply truck going to the right side to re replenish all of these guys and set up a new position right here. And at this point, we are plus two. We're creeping up slowly. T-72 is moving in to engage. Doing a good amount of damage. Vasilex opening up in the back once again. And there go to Spetsnaz GRU. With a last salvo. And that is going to hurt his frontline forces quite a bit. Now we're not getting countered. Literally because he has no long range artillery apparently. Look at the backblast crater as well. Kind of nuts. Does that happen with the Akatsias too? No. Yeah, it's kind of funny with the uh, rockets. And this will be addressed. Because it's kind of unnecessary. There's a big old crater for the backblast. It's it's a cool detail, but you know maybe like a burnt texture would be good enough, just to help with performance, even if it's a little bit. Now T72 is moving in. T64 point blank, not going to be an issue for our T72. And there she goes. And that is a whole lot of units right there. Man pads opening up on the Mi24 VP, but that is a VP with Kokon AT gems, so he's just tearing our tanks apart. Unfortunately, we don't get a direct hit with the second shot. And there go basically all of our T-72s. That was quite painful. Strellas are moving up to help as well. We get a nice hit. He is still on 3 HP, amazingly. So I try to move up this Igla to catch him 
before he manages to pull back too much. So he's going to be tasked with moving up there. Man, a minute ago they were really accurate, now they're kinda poo-poo. Now at this point, we are moving with our airplanes. SC-22 comes in with the KH-29 AT, destroys one of the T-64s, fires at the helicopter as well, unfortunately misses. That would have been an amazing strike right there. Look at those mortar rounds flying up in the air there. Enemy interceptor comes in, does fling a missile at us, luckily misses. And the MiG-29 gets intercepted by the Shilkas and the Cubs that I've now called in and gets doinked immediately. That was awesome. Now speaking of T-72s, we have a fresh batch of three here. Moving up on the right side. Luckily we have a T-55 command, so the artillery isn't going to be a problem. And we take out another T-64 BV with another Su-22 M4. Which is very cost effective, 220 points. And one of those tanks was like 190? So uh, pretty good. Pretty dang good. Our Cubs opening up on a MiG-29, putting it down to 1 HP. If that doesn't finish it, the Shilka will. Which it does. And that's what these gun AAs are really good for. They have a ton of ammo and they only need to like touch the planes and they will do some damage. And if you have a Cub and one Shilka, you can, you can take down planes quite easily. Now our artillery is firing on the Vasilux here. They're kind of getting on my nerves. But this guy is basically going to go down with the next salvo. The other one is badly hurt. And I don't think he actually notices that this is going on. So I'm going to keep firing at him. One cool thing you can do with artillery, by the way, is after you give them orders, press Z or Z to put them on return fire. What that'll do is they will all aim up and be ready to fire. And if you, if you then put them off of return fire, they all fire at the same time. It's beautiful. Now we have a seaplane circling on the right side, mainly to hunt those helicopters. T-64Bs will be a little bit of a problem at max range. 14 armor versus 12. Um, and we have the same cannon AP. So we're just kind of hunting them or waiting for them to come close. Which they are. They're coming nice and close and we took out one of the Vasilix. The other one is badly stunned. Here we go, we're in position. Not in the best position ever. We do manage to take out the BRDM-2 Conkers, which was harassing our units the entire time. And now we're moving up on the T-64s. T-72 takes a direct hit in the face. Not the most fun thing ever. SC-22 comes in, take us, takes out the Vasilex at least. And there goes one of our T-72s, and the other one gets wrecked by, by the Pumachikis. Not the best day ever. Not the best day ever for our units. Now at this point, we are looking at a big old group of units, and I just want to go into neutral because we did some work with a bomber that I just called in. Yeah. My entire mission was to basically stop this push from happening, because if that got into the town, we might just lose it completely. So I call in a MiG-23, which carries quite a lot of bombs, 3,000 kilograms, and that moves in right on top of that and look at that carnage man that was beautiful the HE buff definitely fixed a lot of issues that I had with that previous patch I'm really enjoying using some HE right now and at this point I'm basically okay well his command has to be in the corner I'm just gonna RD it a little bit try to dislodge it uh, unfortunately it's an infantry command for unfortunately for him so we actually do quite a bit of damage. Now at this point, he sees that the numbers are creeping up on him, so he's grouping up a lot of helicopters, two K-50 Akulas, which are the AA variants. He also has the AT. Actually, yeah, he has one of these, one of the AT variants, uh, MI-24 VP, also an MI-8 Recon, which is a nice combo to have. And this is an absolutely beautiful looking helicopter, but luckily for us, we have some AA. Now Estrella here has six out of eight of its um, ammunition still ready to go, which definitely isn't enough for all of these helis. We managed to basically kick one out of the game. The K-50 Akula with its Vickers AT gems are going to one-tap my Strela. Luckily we do have an Igla team there and a Shoka team there. The seaplanes come in, dual seaplane, and they managed to take that guy out, which was quite a sad, quite a sad day for us. Now the Iglas do get a really nice hit on the K-50s and what I do at this point is call in my SC-22s because they have those dual 30mm and they will basically 
one tap these helicopters. Almost one tap these helicopters. In one run, they can usually take out like a heavy helicopter. Well, we take out one of them, mortally wound the other. We do have supplies incoming for our AA. It's kind of just. We're kind of just low on supplies at this point. Oof, we almost hit him with another unit there. Now, at this point, we've kind of moved up on the right side a little bit. Creeping up on that position there, we have recon up on the front line. At this point, our supply is also here. We have more Panzerjägers moving up, and the command is going to be tasked with moving into Charlie if he doesn't have much in there. And as you guys know, people really don't protect their flanks that well. Here we go, Machutsen has spotted a Conqueror's unit. They were not on attack move, I just wanted to get into the corner as much as possible. Another K-50 Akula is being called in. A lot of points being put on helicopters for some reason. Not something I would recommend if you're not doing great on the ground and if you know that the enemy has a lot of AA. Ooh, Special Alpha Claire got a nice shot on him. Another side shot, beautiful. And he finishes, finishes the job. Super good units. I mean, RPG AT, not the best AT weapon ever. But if you get him on the side, you're gonna do some damage. So we move in some AT gems. To try to set up a good position here. And we also move up the T-55 command to go through the hill or through the forest, the tree lines, and get into the zone and neutralize it. And my Pioneer flame units and the Machutsen are basically going to scout ahead. And the entire time, I haven't seen a unit being called in for that side with my recon in the back. So it wasn't just a guess. Alright. It wasn't just a guess. Now at this point, we are a little bit in danger though. That is four helicopters we've got to deal with. Two on one HP, which is, you know, good for us. But our helicopters here, or our planes, are still kind of repairing. We do have one that we just called in now. With the dual 30mm, we call in our bomber as well. Just a gun run, some of these helis. These two are on 1 HP, so that's basically our target. And there goes two helicopters, just like that. Now the Cub here is on a speedy rearming mission. Gets rocketed a little bit, luckily it misses all of that. But we are still reloading. With that, we also call in some Shilkas. And unfortunately, the Cub didn't manage to fire. So we move him up to the left one. We got a MiG-23 coming in, doing a ton of damage, and a double Shilka finishes the job. So that is very cost-effective. 160 points right there for 290, I believe. And look at that. Our BMPs just casually drove straight through his units. He did not put anything down there, because usually people don't really push into that zone. And for some reason, people don't protect their flanks. Like, even though 95% of the battle was here, I still had units here protecting him with AA and everything. And uh, kept pushing up on all fronts, which is the way that you should fight these battles. Don't just be stuck on one side. Also, this flank here from the left side opened up a new gap in his defenses. And that enabled me to push up. I can guarantee you that I could probably just fast move from here, take this road, and get all up in this zone. Let's go into neutral mode. Yep, there's nothing protecting it. And the main problem there is people don't attack those positions because there's like a little bit of the, you know, the fear of the unknown. They don't know that there is nothing there. Or there very well could be a lot of things there. And that's why you need to recon it out. Now we call in the SE-22 once again. There you go, the 12, the two 30mm guns just absolutely tear apart these helicopters. 2800 meters range, with that accuracy and those stats, it's beautiful. And on top of that, it's a seat plane, so if there's AA firing at you, you will also engage those guys. Now the BMP 1Ps have kind of, you know, completed their objective. They've looked around, they haven't really spotted anything, and what they when they did spot something, it was a heavy tank. But they were not having a great time. But that is um that was basically it there. We got a really good fight. We just hit the flank real good. And just try to hold out the 35th uh, 35th guard's power, which is really early game with all of those strong infantry units. 
and um, yeah, basically just ride the wave. Now T64 here gets clapped by T72s. We also have units moving up on the flank here to cut him off. We have Conqueror's teams there now, which is going to be a huge problem for him. And with that, we move in our command, putting us up to plus eight, simply because we have one more zone over there. And now we're just gun running commands. So now we're kind of just bullying uh, that unit there. Nice ATGM hit by the Conqueror's unit there. Getting a really good amount of RNG with those guys. But yeah, that was a really, uh, really fun little match and um, kind of a good demonstration of what you can do when you are kind of outgunned with in terms of forward deployment, because with forward deployment, you have such a huge advantage over the enemy if you play it right. Um, he had to really push hard on both flanks and not just one area and then hold still. I think um, if he moved some Metis teams, Recon and AT Gems up to the my side of the town or that industrial area, that would have probably been GG and I would have to move hard on the right side instead. But he let me get in there and he, he let me contest it. Now that MiG-23 bombing run there destroyed so much. That was absolutely nuts. Look at that. Two T-64s, two Desaniki squads, a BMD and a Screjet and also an Igla team. Man, that was just disgusting. RM-70 is actually doing some damage, destroying a Pumachiki squad, but the main purpose of that is to stun the enemy units. And also the SU-22s with his twin 30 mils, destroying helicopters left and right, and also really good against tanks obviously with the ATGMs on it. And uh, yeah, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this one as well. I definitely did playing it, and I'll see you guys back soon. Take care.